want to record this, and we want to record the whole thing. Okay? All right. Great. Glad you all could come. I'm bouncing this around a little bit. We're going to have a real supernatural, uh, prophetic type of prayer meeting tonight. The Lord has showed me exactly what to do tonight. And it's never, it's always fun, isn't it, when he shows us interesting things to do. Amen. But before we get started tonight with our prayer service uh, part of it, the prayer part of it, I wanted to give you a little word. So I want everybody to grab your Bibles. I want to thank uh, Pastor Billy and Linda. Glory to God for coming. And uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, we were talking about the different kinds of prayer, and tonight we're going to talk just a little bit. This ought to be interesting, though. Just a little bit about praying in the Spirit. I did a YouTube video on this and went into some type of detail. I won't go in the same direction tonight. It'll be a little bit different. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And uh, it says this, in, out of the King James, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And the Greek says praying always with all manner or all kinds of prayer. There's different kinds of prayer, different kinds of rules, right? And then uh, the amplified portion of that points it out like this. Pray at all times on every occasion in every season in the spirit with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To the end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all saints, God's consecrated people. One of the things I've learned about praying in tongues is you can do that. It's difficult to pray in the natural over some situations. And so God has given us a, um, this wonderful prayer language. Amen. I want to talk about that a little bit tonight. Um, some of the uh, denominational folks say praying in the Spirit is praying uh, anointed and led by the Holy Ghost, like it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, and I would agree with that. You can pray in the Spirit and still pray with your understanding. In fact, all prayer should be done in the Spirit anyway, right? However, uh, I tell people all the time, 95% of my prayer is done in other tongues, we're gonna, I'm going to show you something tonight that I don't think I've ever heard much. And I know that I'm stretching, but I know, that, I know it's right. I've known that for a long time some of these things are right. But, you know, uh, when I was caught, um, uh, when I was taught, uh, we had a certain amount of revelation on the gifts of the Spirit. I think God's going to give us more revelation on the gifts of the Spirit and how they operate. Uh, one of the guys I really like to listen to on that is Larry Huggins because he takes all the wraps off that. He believes that we haven't even taught, because of the way we taught, we've been kind of, we press it in there, and we, we don't go any further than that. And there's a lot of ways God can work through the gifts of the Spirit, right? Yeah. But uh, we're going to talk about tongues tonight. And if that's new to you and you're listening to this, just relax. I, wanna, I, wa I know maybe you've been taught a little bit different. Give us a chance to share with you and just judge it with the Word of God. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Praying in tongues, in my opinion, is vital. And in this prayer group and in our prayer groups, it is going to become a very vital and awesome thing that we do, and we need to know why we're doing it, how we're doing it, how, how come we're doing it. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if you look at verse 2, out of the King James Version, it says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Stop right there. He who speaks in an unknown tongue, what? Speaks not to who? Men, but unto God. So that's praying, isn't it? What is prayer? Talking to God. Well, that's important. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now I'm going to read it out of the uh, Amplified. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands or catches his meaning, because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. So I want you to notice, though, that the Bible says if we pray in tongues or speak in tongues, and this is directly talking about praying in tongues because you can have a message in tongues that needs to be interpreted to a congregation. That's not talking to God. That's talking to men that way. That's because there's different kinds of tongues. But in this particular prayer tongue, he says that speaking in tongues is, or praying in tongues, I'm going to use that term, praying in tongues is praying in the spirit, right? Praying in tongues is praying in the spirit. So we can see that. And I won't have you turn over there, but in Jude, it talks about building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, talking about the same thing. Keep yourself in the love of God. 
you know, and uh, 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 that's a, a great thing. But I want, to, want you to notice in verse 4 here something tonight. Verse 4. Now I'm going to share this out of the, uh, the King James first. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the churches. Right? Uh, so, uh, out of the Amplified it says, he who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. I like that. But he who prophesies, interpreting the divine will and purpose and teaching and in, in, with inspiration, edifies and improves the church and promotes growth in Christian piety, holiness, and happiness. Well, you can see by what I'm reading here that tongues, for the most part, and uh, uh, the, the way it's used the most, the way it will be used the most in people's lives, is not really in church, but it's a private thing, right? Devotional thing and prayer thing. Amen. But it's very important. A lot of the people who are against tongues and get all, like, you know, bent out of shape about it basically say, well, it's not as important as prophesying or preaching and teaching. But that's not what he's saying. It's very important for us personally. Yeah. And it's very important for our prayer lives. And if you're not edified, you can't edify to anybody else. I like to see everybody pray in tongues because apparently it improves you. And as a pastor, I want to see some improvement. <laughs> so the more, the more prayer, uh, <clears throat> tongue praying we got, the more improvement we got going on. So it's interesting. Um, but I want you to see something tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, go down to verse 14. This is interesting. Now I'm going to read out of the King James, and then I'll read out of the Amplified again because it helps us. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Right? Let's keep reading. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Interesting. I said interesting. Now let's look at this over here in the Amplified. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays. But my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and helps nobody. In other words, the mind part of it you don't get when you're praying in the spirit there. But it's important because he says when you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit by the Holy Spirit. Now what's he saying? He's saying the Holy Spirit literally gives your spirit what to pray for. That's what he's saying there. And that is very powerful. Because with that kind of prayer, you cannot lose. Right? We can't lose with that kind of praying. Amen. Amen. So this is very important. So we see here, when you pray in the Spirit, your spirit is empowered by God. Now, I want to say something to you. What happens when you pray in the Spirit? You're praying in the Spirit. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and other places that we don't know how to pray for as we ought to, that we have weaknesses, all of us, right? And the Holy Spirit helps us with our weaknesses. Amen. Now, what's that mean? It means to me that when we're praying in the Spirit and your, your Spirit is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is literally downloading wisdom, revelation, understanding and whatever else you need into your spirit, but yet your mind yet doesn't connect it, but it's there. Yep, amen. Now, the way that it comes out sometimes is, is you can be praying in the spirit and you can be in, and God is really, you're crying. God is helping you cry out to him. <laughs> God is helping you cry out to him for wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding, whatever you need in life. And then through other means, and we'll talk about that in a minute, God will bring an interpretation. I want you to hear that now. Bring an interpretation of what you've been praying about. Sometimes it'll come through preaching, teaching. could be reading your own Bible. It could be a lot of ways God can do it, just talking to somebody, right? Watching a, tele uh, a Christian television program. And so we, are, we should be praying this way all the time. Now, not all the time when we're praying this way is that's what's happening. Sometimes we're interceding for other people. But this, but this building up part of it that I'm talking about right now is definitely this is what's happening. So God is downloading inside of us things that we need, and he's also praying out things that we need that he will bring 
people into our path to show us, teachers, pastors, right? Circumstances. Sometimes you'll even bring ugly people so you can learn how to walk in love. I was talking to a pastor on the phone today. He had a Jezebel manifestation. I said, oh, that's one of the worst because it'll drain you. It goes right to your spirit. And uh, he, he's telling me about this, and he said, well, I'm getting, I'm getting stronger because it didn't bother me as much the last time it happened. It, it still got me pretty good. And I said, you get to the point to where you don't want to even bother you for five minutes. I said, however, I said, I'm not going to tell you that this will be the only time that's going to happen because I'd be lying to you. Of course, he didn't really want to hear that part, I think. I think they want, want you to tell them, well, that'll all just go away for the rest of your life, but it won't. The enemy is always trying to pick on somebody some way to get in there. Amen. Now, wisdom and knowledge is downloaded, so to speak. I'm using that term because it's a computer term we all know. Into your spirit. Then we hear the word, and spiritual understanding comes. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, let's look down here at verse 13 and read through verse 15. I think that's right. Uh, yeah, we read that, didn't we, already? Where, where, uh, uh, verse 13. Now, this is out of the King James. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. I'm going to let that hang for a second. Now, he, there's two things going on here. If you speak in a tongue in the congregational setting, you get a tongue which should be when God really anoints you to do that, it needs to be interpreted. So if there's no interpreter, you can pray for the interpretation. That's what most people say this means, right? This is what we've been taught. And how many know there's a truth there? But it's certainly not all the truth. <laughs> Let me show you how this works. See, because here's the thing. I've had a lot of people tell me, well, you know what, Pastor Tom, I pray in tongues and pray in tongues, but if I pray to interpret, nothing comes. And, and, I'm, and I felt like telling them, boy, there's a lot to learn. I wish I could open your head and dump everything in there because some of these things did not come easy for me. Just because you pray in tongues, he's not talking about just interpreting it like I interpret Stella's or somebody else's in church. Not necessarily. I'll show you what I mean by that. Even so, as far as, as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek to you make zeal to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him who speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitable. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Are you getting this? Maybe you haven't got it yet. I'll read it out of the uh, Amplified. I want you to think about this for a second. In context, therefore... The person who speaks in an unknown tongue should pray for the power to interpret and explain what he says. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me, prays, but my mind is unproductive, it bears no fruit, helps nobody. Then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, by the Holy Spirit that is within me. I will pray with my intellect, with my mind and understanding. I will sing with my spirit, by the Holy Spirit that is within me. And I will sing intelligently with my mind and understanding." It seems to me like he's talking about prayer here, that when you're praying, one of the things you can do is you can pray in the Spirit, and then you can interpret it, right? Hallelujah. That's good, isn't it? In other words, you may be in the mode, like I was the other day, where I was in the mode where I would be singing in the Spirit, right? And then I would interpret it in song in my own private devotions. And I was doing that and praising and worshiping God for about an hour that way. And that's always fun, Right? That ain't the only way it works, honey. That's not the only way this works. Sometimes you can be praying in the Spirit for a long time. And you can even, you, you try to interpret, it just doesn't seem like it works right. Because interpretation is not limited just to the way we do it in church when there's the tongues that need to be interpreted. Interpretation comes lots of ways. One of the things I learned as a pastor what I need to do is pray in tongues a lot for, during the week because while I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm picking up on what my congregation needs. And then I go out and I interpret it. So a lot of times the interpretation of what you're praying about will come through your pastor. You see what I'm talking about here? A lot of times this interpretation thing will come through somebody else later on. It's not right then. Doesn't doesn't give a time limit on this, does it? 
if you think about it, think about this. So in other words, one of the greatest things about praying in the Spirit is the more you pray in the Spirit, you're going to get to the interpretation some way, somewhere, somehow. Amen. Wouldn't it be great if everybody prayed in the Spirit during the week because what happens when you get the interpretation, it is divinely, it is divinely inspired interpretation, divinely fueled and empowered teaching and preaching and prophesying. Amen. Not this dead, dry mind thing, but it comes from God's spirit. It comes from now for this place that you're at, for the congregation you're preaching to and the people that are listening to you. And God sends a word powerfully and it is anointed and it destroys yoke and church gets fun that way. So we need to see, praise God, that God works a lot of different ways in this interpretation thing and tongues thing. So, glory to God forevermore. I think we ought to just open our hearts to the Lord to be used in all these ways. Amen. Because his utterance is supernatural. And the Bible says pray, do everything in the spirit. The Bible says walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, move in the spirit, pray in the spirit. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not to be a, we're not to be a natural people, we're a supernatural people. Amen. You know, we ought to get to be so sharp spiritually speaking that when you go to work, you know it's going to happen half the time before you get there. You know who's going to say what, and you're going to, you're going to have answers for people, and you're going to have wisdom for people, and you're going to have words of knowledge for people, and you're going to know when somebody's going to manifest. And you can pray about that and stop that before it starts. Amen. We need Christians all over the world to become so spiritually uh, in tune, we could go down to the police station and say, you better go down there, they're going to rob a bank today. You better go over here and watch this, there's going to be a terrorist attack over here. This is what we are called to do. This is what we should be doing. They're going to psychics instead of Christians. And so I say this. Let's learn how to become supernatural people because we have that supernatural tongue will bring wisdom, revelation, faith, keys to life, and everything else. Now, grab your Bibles real quick, and I'll finish with this. Look at Matthew chapter 15. You guys getting anything out of this? One of the things the devil don't like is this message. The devil does not like when people pray a lot in tongues because there's not a whole lot he can do about anything then. He starts losing his strength and power. He starts losing his place in your life. God starts informing you of more and more revelation. And the next thing you know, you are his worst nightmare. And we want a whole church of people that are his worst nightmare. When assignments are handed out in hell, I want the assignment to pick on somebody in this church to be a punishment for the devils. In other words, oh no, anything but that. Please send me down the street to so-and-so, but I don't want to go over there. I get beat up every time I try to go over there. Now, Matthew chapter 15, I want to read verses 1 through 8, and I want you to notice something here because we're going to talk about natural uh, religious teaching and thought and men's thoughts and fleshly thoughts and ideas about the Word of God and what God really wants us to have. In just very short time here, we'll see it. Matthew 15, 1 through 8. Now out of the Amplified Bible, I'm going to read this. Then from Jerusalem came scribes and Pharisees and said, Why do your disciples transgress and violate the rules handled down by the, by the elders of the past? For they do not practice ceremonially washing the hands before they eat. He replied to them, and why also do you transgress and violate the commandment of God for the sake of the rules handed down by your forefathers, the elders? For God commanded, honor your father and mother, and he who curses or reviles or speaks evil or abuses or mistreats improperly his father and mother, let him come to his end by death. But you say, if anyone tells his father and mother what you would have granted from me, that is money or whatever, I have, I, I have that might be used for helping you is already dedicated as a, as a gift to God, then he is exempt and no longer under obligation to honor and help his father and mother. So for the sake of your tradition, everybody say tradition, tradition. the rules handed down by your forefathers, you have set aside the word of God, depriving of, it, of its force and authority and making of it no effect. Somebody asked me, is there anything more powerful in the word of God? I said, yes, religious traditions. Traditions of men make it void of power. It has no power when it's just a tradition of a man. Get that? Now flip over. Let's see, where's the next one I wanted? Flip over to uh, Matthew chapter 16. 
Verse 1, out of the Amplified Bible, we'll be reading through verse 12. Now the Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus, and they asked him to show them a sign, spectacular miracle, with heaven attesting his divine authority. And he replied to them, when it's evening, and you say, it's be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is, is red and has a gloomy and threatening look. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and morally unfaithful generation craves a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then he left them and went away. When the disciples reached the other side of the sea, they found that they had forgotten to buy, bring bread. Jesus said to them, be careful and on and guard against the leaven ferment of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves about it, saying, it is because we did not bring any bread. Jesus, being aware of this, said, Why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? O oh, you men, how little trust you have in me, how little faith. Do you not yet discern and perceive and understand? Do you not remember the five loaves and five thousand, how many small baskets you gathered? Nor the seven loaves or the four thousand, how many large portions you took up? How is it that you be fail to understand that I'm not talking to you about bread? And this is me, you dummies. But beware of the leaven, firmament of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they discerned by their rock, rock, rocket light, lightning minds. Then they discerned that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Religious teaching is not just bad. You've got to beware of it. Now, I've been pastoring 37 years, and I can tell you people come in our church who've been in these churches for years, and it is tough on the pastor to try to get over sometimes to these people any kind of revelation knowledge because the religious tradition has blocked it, and, and, the, and, the, and this, this leaven that they have learned really has poisoned them, and so it becomes ch challenging and difficult for them. Now, I want you to notice this. In, the, in these two chapters, Jesus is dealing with the, his disciples about the importance of something here. Because these boys grew up good Jewish boys. These were his, their teachers. These were the guys that, that were teaching them since they were in Sunday school, so to speak. These are people they knew, they grew up with. They had learned to be respectful and listen to the teaching of these people. And now Jesus is saying, this stuff will kill you. Right? That must have been a real shock to them. If we're not supposed to listen to that, well, I mean, what's going on here? Well, how many know they had some ideas, but Jesus always answers our questions. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, he starts to do that. Then Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, um, uh, saying, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they answered, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, another Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but who do you, who yourselves do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, of course, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied. Are you Simon Barjona? For flesh and blood, men have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven, look up at me. Only the Holy Ghost, only the Father. You could have not got that anywhere except from the Father. And because you got it from the Father, you are blessed. And every time you get a revelation from the Father, you're blessed. And the word blessed means you are empowered to prosper. Y'all get that? All right, so he's showing them something. So he says, you're blessed. You're empowered to prosper. You, you could have not, you, only, you had to get that from God. That's the only way you could have got it. It's a revelation from heaven. It's a revelation from heaven. It's different than that revelation you were getting from men. It's a revelation from heaven, not from men. This is a good thing. That revelation from heaven will bless you. That thing will kill you. Yep. See? Verse 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, Greek. Petros, a large piece of rock, and on this rock, Greek Petra, a huge piece like Gibraltar, I will build my church, and the gates of hell, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its determinant or hold out against it. Uh, uh, word of advice, Catholic people got this wrong. Catholic people think that the, the, this, he's talking about Peter. 
Jesus is not going to build his church on Peter. So if he built it on Peter, it didn't last long because Peter folded like a deck of cards the first time a woman asked him if he was one of the disciples. <laughs> he's saying, what he's saying is this. He's saying, Simon, you're blessed because you have a revelation from God that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. The first revelation anybody has to come to come into the kingdom of God is that revelation. And all other revelation is built upon that revelation. Everybody say, revelation. revelation. In other words, God breathed revelation. God inspired revelation from the word of God by the Holy Ghost is the thing that the church needs. That kind of thing, it, 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 the, the gates of hell cannot prevail against that because that is alive. And it's powerful. And once you get it, you can't have it taken away from you. And you can use it. It's like a gigantic sword. And it's like a gigantic house. You begin to build your house on that rock. Not the sand of religious traditions, but the rock of Jesus Christ and revelation uh, uh, knowledge. And you build on the room of this and room of this and room of this and room of Pretty soon you got yourself a mansion, man. And it is a fortress that the enemy cannot penetrate. And it's a fortress that you can fight from and you can win your battles. And hallelujah, it doesn't make any difference what the world does or, the, or, or, or what. Glory to God, you win. Then he goes on and says, after that, if that's not good enough, which it is, it's pretty good. He says in verse 19, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. All right. Amen. What's he talking about there? Every time you get a revelation, man, that's a key that will open the door for you, honey. First time I ever got a revelation on faith. First time I ever got a revelation on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. First time I ever got a revelation about tongues and this thing. Every, every, every time we come to church, we've got to get more revelation. Every time you get a revelation about anything that God is doing or giving to you, your authority in Christ, this thing, the revelation of the power of the name of Jesus, that is a key that will bind the devil and loose God Amen. into your life. So this, my dear friends that are listening to me out there in internet land is why we have to build our churches on the supernatural power of praying in tongues and the supernatural power of prophetic and dynamic and God-breathed teaching and inspired revelation knowledge and not man-made denominational doctrine, dry, dead stuff that's like sitting through torture chamber. We need a move of God because we're coming into a time now where no longer is it going to work where we have that kind of thing? The only thing that's going to work anymore is when we are empowered from on high and we have revelation from on high. Can I get an amen from everybody? Amen. Now we're going to do something in our prayer meeting today that we normally haven't done. I'm going to have Pastor Tim come sit up here. And Before we get going on this, if you have any prayer requests, please bring, bring them up. And the reason I want to record this is I want to show people tonight the Lord said to me to teach a little bit about what I just taught on, but I also want to teach how important it is. The Bible says, and somebody can help me with uh, the scripture, uh, Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith, and he said this, war a good warfare on your prophecies, or prophecies. When true prophetic utterance is spoken, inspired preaching and teaching prophetic utterances, we can take those things if it relates to us or it's to us, and we need to begin as prayer people to war on these things. And I'm going to start bringing them in. I'm going to start bringing in prophecies and different things that I see, and we're going to war on them. If I really think they're of God, and I think it's pertinent to our situation, our nation, whatever it may be, and we're going to war, and we're going to do some things. Amen. Now, tonight, I pulled one up. The Lord had me pull one up about prophecy. Um, about uh, Brother Hagin in 1983 about prayer. We're going to go over that one. Then there's one that was to me and Stella by Larry Huggins. We're going to go over that one tonight. And I'm going to, Tim's going to read this. And as he reads it, I'm going to stop him and I'm going to pray. We're going to pray at different parts about this. Amen. And see what God does. Is that okay? I'm glad you like it. Here we go. This ought to be fun. Get ready. In this move, in this move, in this move that is about to come, and even you're in the edge of it right now, it will not be altogether something new that you've never seen. I'll, I'll be a combination of everything you've seen put together 
then plus a little bit more. Okay, hang on. Right now, I want you to stick up your hands and let's begin to pray. Father, we want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus that this thank coming move of God will include everything that we have yes, seen, Lord. but yet even a little bit more. Yes, we, we pull that down by faith from heaven right now into the body of Christ right now for all of these people you, that are willing to take it. We thank you that you start with our church, but Lord God, in Jesus' name, we pray it over every putty that is listening to me in the sound of my voice in their congregations. We pray, Lord God, that this glorious, you, outstanding, you, Lord. powerful you. revival goes and yes. comes to us in a mighty wind in thank Jesus' you, name. We receive that. Thank you, Lord. All right, see, go to the next one. This, in this move of God that is just about to spring upon you, there will be a manifestation of casting out demons that you haven't seen yet. Wow. Stop right there for a second. Where did that come from? That must mean that we need to learn how to cast out devils. Yeah. I guess I've been on the cutting edge of that for a while. <laughs> hey, let's pray about that. Father, we want to thank you. That you give us authority, Thank praise Lord, God, and you, you have Lord. given us authority to cast out devils. We don't need to be afraid of it. Yep. We don't need to back down from it. We don't need to be fanatical about it or do things that are wrong in the context of that. But, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that that is going to become a part of our lives and a part of the church's lives. I pray, Father, this is, I, I pray a wild prayer. I pray that people will fall out and manifest in a bunch of these pastors churches and they'll have to learn how to deal with it in Jesus name okay go on Tim now some have drawn back from casting out demons and the Spirit of God said I began a move along that line a few years ago and men aborted the move they mixed some of their own thinking in on it and they tried to control it and do it according to pattern stop we're not going to do it anymore. Come on, everybody. Thank you, Lord. No more yep. according to just some kind of pattern. Yes, this is what we're talking about tonight. We've got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Now, principles are good. Principles work. And everybody might do it a little bit differently when God uh, moves upon them. But, Father, we thank you that we do these things yes, not by might nor by power, thank but you, by Lord. the Spirit of the living God. Now, listen to this. God says right now that people that are listening to this message, I'm going to, is, he's going to impart to them some of them the gift of special faith for casting out devils it's going to come right through you're listening to the internet or whatever it is right now i command you right now to be blessed with that in jesus name and i thank you lord god that 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 demons will be uh discerned and demons will be dealt with and demons will be cast out and it'll be like a domino effect and healing will come and people will be set free all over the nation and the church will be cleansed in jesus name thank you lord next one. And according to this way that we think it ought to be done. But you haven't seen anything yet of what you're going to see in dealing with demons. For <laughs> demons are let loose upon the earth. They're going about it as never before because they know their time is short. And so in this multiplication, this advance of demon activity, there will be an activity of the Holy Ghost. Demons that have harassed men, demons that have held ministries in check, hallelujah, will leave. And you have not seen yet what you will see. Hang on right there. Come on, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority right now over every principality and over every power and over every ruler of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high place. We act on this word that stopping ministries, stalling ministries, even our own ministries, even the pastors in here in ministry and anybody else's ministry that's listening to me, we command those things to stop their maneuvers now and we cast them out and we, get, we command them to leave and we loose the power of the Holy Ghost to bring about change yes. and revival yes. and strength and healing you, and Lord. deliverance and liberty in Jesus Thank name. You, okay, go ahead. And you've not seen yet what you will see in the area of dealing with demons, casting out demons, exercising authority over demons and we're about to step into it like you'd <laughs> step through a door into another room. And secondly, saith the spirit of God, you've not seen the revival of divine healing that you're about to see. Oh yes, you saw those that I raised up You've seen men and women mightily used in my spirit. I sent them forth as a pilot program to try to train you. But many just looked at them and lifted them up, and some of them were lifted up in pride, and the anointing left them. And some became money-minded and lost the anointing. But there will arise a group in this day that's a brand new breed. They'll not be, a, they'll not be greedy of filthy lucre. They'll not be wanting to attract attention upon themselves. They would care less whether God uses me. They'd rather 
God would use you. Oh, stop right there. Come on, let's all lift up our hands. Thank we you, thank Lord. you for thank this you, mighty new breed, this yes, generation Father. that's coming up. We thank you, Lord yes, God, for Lord the humility. God. We thank you, Lord God, for their strength. We yes. thank you for the gifts of the Spirit that are coming into the church, yes, the power gifts, the healing gifts. We thank you that you use who you want to use. You use the lay people. You thank use you, the Father. preachers. Yes, you Lord. use all of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Are you ready to receive it tonight, ladies yes. and gentlemen? Father, impart unto us, Lord, spiritual gifts. Impart unto us strength yes, and healing and miracles and deliverance and the, all the nine gifts of the Spirit, yes, discerning Lord. of spirits and special faith and working of miracles, to words of wisdom and knowledge, tongues, interpretation, prophecy. Yes. We receive that in yes, Jesus' Lord, name. We release it in Jesus' name. And Lord, remove these people that are money, grub, and hungry preachers yes. that are just after people's money. We rebuke Thanks, that Father. and we ask you to raise up true Holy Ghost anointed people that won't that that'll be so strong listen to this prayer so strong that they put that other stuff to shame yes thank you father thank you lord yeah. and god will not just use ministers he'll use laymen and there'll be a revival of divine healing such as you have not seen in your lifetime or read about or heard about saith the lord and a revival of the supernatural not only the supernatural in casting out devils not only the supernatural in healing the sick, not only the supernatural in speaking with other tongues, but the supernatural in the realm of the seen realm. Men will see the glory of God. Glo Men will see the glory of God. A cloud will hang over certain congregations, even the church building for days at a time. And everybody that passes by, sinner and saint alike, will say, Well, what in the world is that? I've never seen anything like that. Ha, ha, ha. All right, hang on on that. we got a ha-ha there. Thank you, Lord. Father, we want to thank you right now thank in the you, name Father, of Jesus. We, we are you. candidates for that yes. in this church. We're candidates in yes, this church. Lord. I know the other pastors are candidates in their church. Bring it, Lord. Bring yes, it on Lord. us. Yes. Let thank us you, have Father. the fire department bug because they don't know whether there's a fire yes. half the time or what's yes, going on Lord. down here. We pray for every church that Lord God is moving into revival. Let that kind of glory, let that kind of yes. fire, Hallelujah. let that kind of anointing, let that kind of thing happen. And Father, as people begin to even go by the churches and even as they, as they go into the parking lot, let the convicting power of the Holy Ghost and the, and the healing and delivering power of the Holy Ghost, whatever they need, let it Come upon them with strength like revivals yes. of days you, of old in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory and to God. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting blessed. Amen. I told you this will be different. <laughs> Go ahead. And there will be in other places, there will be in other places fire of the Spirit that will actually become literal. Oh, yes, in the spirit realm, some of us have seen it. In the spirit realm, we've been conscious of the fire of God but the fire will actually come into manifestation. And there'll be people, sinners as well as saints, that will see fire all over the heads of people. There'll be people driving down the street or down the highway, and they'll see fire on top of the buildings. And they'll come and say, what does all this mean? But you see, the Lord will use signs of his presence to bring people in the last days into the fullness of his spirit and into full salvation. And signs, signs, what kinds of signs? Miraculous things in the realm of the spirit. And then they'll be manifested in the realm of the physical. And the glory of God will fall. And the power of God will be in manifestation. And men will, and women too, will even be transported like Philip was and found in another place. Woo! And great, great, great shall be the reward thereof for the... Let's stop there. Come on, everybody. Signs. Yes, Lord. Miraculous Thank signs. Thank you, signs. Biblical signs, biblical, biblical wonders, things. strange you, acts, yes, special Lord. miracles by yes. the hands of the preachers and the and yes. the people out here. We 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 receive that. We receive Thank the you, fire. Father. Let let the people of our churches, the people Thank that are listening God. to me Thank and their Jesus. churches, let the fire of God be on us, so that even if we walk down to the mall or at our jobs or wherever, yes, let, let that glory and that fire be upon us. So people will come up and say, "What is that on you? That's scaring me." Yes. And we'll say, "Well." It's not it's normal have you ever seen those religious paintings how the people had the aura or whatever yes. that thing was on their head that's really what it is 
That's the fire of God, you, and Lord. it's on me because I'm a Christian, and we're living yes, in the Lord. last days, and, and God is pouring it. out his spirit, Lord, and people will fall it. on their knees and repent down oh, there at the store you, because the spirit of God is thank upon you, us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Yeah. For the Lord God is the same God today as he was yesterday. His power has not diminished, and his name is still the same. Today he can make the iron axe head to float. Today he can divide the river just for two men to cross over on the other side. Today yeah. he can feed 5,000 with a little boy's lunch. He is a miracle-working God. Brag on him. Lift him up. Draw attention unto him. Tell about how great he is. Get up in faith and tell what great things he's going to do. And he'll move and keep his word with you. And many shall be astonished. But the greatest miracle of all is that there'll be so many fish caught in the net that the nets can't hold them. There won't be church houses enough to hold the people. Amen. Amen. For the purpose of it all is that you may be fishers of men. Hallelujah. Quit fishing. Hallelujah. Quit fishing in your bathtub. There's not any fish in your own bathtub. <laughs> Go out where the fishes are and throw out the net. Not the hook, the net. And pull it in. Hallelujah. And bring them in. Amen. Let's stop right yes, there. Lord. It's net time. Thank it's you, good Father. catching one or two, but it's net time. We're, net, we're, yes. we're netting a lot of fish out there, but I want to net some thank here, you, too. Lord. Thank Father, you, Lord. we thank you that that net, that net anointing of evangelism is coming upon every church that thank wants you, it right Father. now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank the thank bottom line thank of you, all of this is soul winning. That's the bottom line. You, Lord. It's soul winning. We thank you Pakistan yes. comes in greater. We thank you Praise our you, outreaches Lord. come in thank greater. You, we thank you that everybody's outreaches come in. And here in Door County, we cast out Bless that you, net. Lord. And, Lord, yeah. we ask you to use this building yes, and fill Lord. it up with hungry people. And every person, you, Lord, uh, over in Oconto and all the churches and Praise every person you, and every pastor's Look church that that's listening to us, we thank you, Lord God, that we are netting out oh, and we're you, bringing in the net Praise and you, the Lord. harvest and the fish for the harvest is ripe. In Jesus' thank name, you, can you agree with me on that thank tonight? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord shall shine and the end time shall come. And you'll stand in the place, yes, many of you that stand here, including myself, will stand in the place of ministry that you've not stood in before, and will stand in the place that's been ordained for you from the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And if it were to be, if it could, if it could, if it could be, if it could be told you, if we were able to tell you in human language that which will transpire in some of your lives and some of our lives who are here just now, your mind would not be able to comprehend it. As you say, speaking in the human vernacular, it would almost blow your mind. But you'll <laughs> see it. You'll rejoice in it. You'll be glad of it. It's just out there a little ways in front of you. Be faithful. Be joyous. And rejoice in the Lord always. And he'll bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Let's pray over thank that. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you. We thank you. We're coming into our ministries. Yes, Lord. Fullness of our ministries. Yes, Father. Things that, Father, we haven't seen before, places we've never been before, yes. exceedingly yes. abundantly yes. above all yes. that we can even ask or think. Father, Bless I thank you, you that it's not just a fivefold ministry gift, but yes. all kinds, business adventures, yes. entrepreneurs. Yes. We well, thank you for, uh, it doesn't matter what the Seek realm is, supernatural Seek favor, supernatural Praise income, supernatural you, debt reduction, supernatural paying off debt, supernatural blessing financially. Thank you, Lord. Bring it in, Lord. We thank receive it. it. Money comes to us. Money comes to the body thank of Christ. You, and we thank you, Lord God, that it happens, Lord God. God, Thank now you, we, we, we no longer have to wait. It's now. So we receive that now. Now. In Jesus' Thank name. Thank you, Lord. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. Let's stand up, everybody. Lift your right hand and close your eyes and say stand it in up. faith. Lift up your right hand. I'm going to sit down because I'm sitting down here, but stand up if you can. I'm going to go ahead and raise up your right hand. Let's, let's repeat. I'm in agreement with you. I may not understand it with my mind. I'm in agreement with you. I may not understand it with my mind. Even if it was told me. Even if it was told me. I might not be able to comprehend it. I might not be able to comprehend it. But I believe it. But I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. 
I commit myself to be one. I commit myself to be one. That will be used of God. That will be used of God. I go on record tonight. I go on record tonight. I'll pay the price. I'll pay the price. I'll make the sacrifice. I'll make the sacrifice. I'll deny the flesh. I'll deny the flesh. I'll walk in the spirit. I'll walk in the spirit. I'll be one. I'll be one. Who will walk in the flow of God. Who will walk in the flow of God. And do the will of God. And do the will of God. And the work of God. And the work of God. I will give myself to prayer. I will give myself to prayer. I will give myself to the Spirit of God. I will give myself to the Spirit of God. If He calls on me in the nighttime, if He calls on me in the nighttime, I'll be on my knees praying. I'll be on my knees praying. If I'm never seen of man, if I'm never seen a man, and I'm always just behind the scenes, and I'm always just behind the scenes, I'll be faithful. I'll be faithful. The will of God be done. The will of God be done. The work of God, the work of God, shall be accomplished. Shall be accomplished. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys you Lord. Can sit down again. Glory to Praise God you, Jesus. forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Many Woo. shall go and tell the story and his great glory show. The power of God and manifestation shall be the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation of his Spirit. Into full potential shall come the ministry gifts, the apostle and prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher too, shall flow as one. Ha, 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 ha. Stop there. Say this with ha. me out loud. Bring them in, Lord. Bring them in, Lord. Bring them in, Lord. Bring them in, Lord. True apostles. True apostles. Prophets. Prophets. Evangelists. Evangelists. Pastors. Pastors. Teachers. Teachers. Be released. Be released. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the fullness of what that is. Yes, hallelujah. Fullness. Glory to God. And we as one, one body and one spirit, hallelujah, shall go forth to conquer and to do his deeds. And great shall be the reward thereof. Now put your other hand up and thank him. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now let me give you a further word of wisdom and advice. Being conscious of a mighty move in your spirit, wanting and desiring to do the will of God. But don't try to do it yourself. Just learn to relax and to flow with the spirit. Don't try to figure it out in your head. What does he want me to do? Just learn to relax and flow with the spirit. I'll take care... It'll take care of itself. You don't have to worry. I just wonder. I know there's something. I know there's something he wants me to do. Fine, just keep on praying and just flow with the Spirit. You'll not come into the full potential of what God has for you tomorrow. You'll not come into the full potential of what God has for you next week. You'll not come into the full potential of what God has for you next month. Some will not even come into the full potential of what God has for them next year. Some will not for quite a period of time, but as you're faithful and as you're trained and as you learn to yield, you'll move eventually into that place, hallelujah, that he had for you all along. Glory to God. Glory to God. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Praise his holy name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Say this with me out loud. Full potential. Full potential. Everybody's full potential is coming Everybody's forth right potential. now in the name yeah. of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for Thank training, you, teaching us, helping us. Lord, in anything you, Lord. we need, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Now, isn't that something? Yeah. I told you it would be. Glory to God forevermore. Now, that's that one prophecy there. See? We can do this a lot. I think we're on to something here. Now, we're going to go on on this uh, pray for a, a, a is, it, is there more? There's a half a page. In okay, we're going to read that. Then go ahead and read that. But you see, moving into that place of ministry or whatever it is, whether it's full-time ministry or pulpit ministry or personal ministry or whatever your place is in the body of Christ, moving into that place is fueled by prayer, fired by the Spirit, and ignited with His glory. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see, if there's no fuel there, there's nothing to ignite. Notice the Spirit said, I never thought of that. It just came out of the inside Stop of me. Stop one second. Prayer is the fuel. If we don't have any fuel, you can't ignite anything. Mm -hmm. If I go out there to that garbage, I shouldn't be saying this. We still burn our garbage out there where I live. If I go out there and, 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 and I don't have some fuel in this weather, it ain't happening, honey. Mm -hmm. Prayer is the fuel. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that prayer groups like this will be raised up all over the place 
and that people will begin to come to this prayer group. In fact, I would encourage every one of you to somehow get your hands on this, this uh, CD and just hand it to people that are hungry about praying. Mm -hmm. because there's an anointing. I just sit here, and I can soak this up. There's a strong anointing. This anointing will go on to prayer groups. People can share it at their prayer groups. I encourage pastors to spin this CD at their prayer groups and show people a little bit of it because there's an impartation on this thing. Okay, mm -hmm. read the rest of it. Notice the Spirit said, I never thought of that. It came out of the inside of me, fueled by prayer, fired by the Spirit, ignited with His glory. So it's fueled by prayer, what was it? Fired, Fired by, the by the Spirit. Ignited. Lit, ignited by the Spirit. With glory. And, and then it, it, it's ignited by His glory. Amen. Amen. You have to stop and analyze that. There's a difference between firing, igniting. Yes, you see, it's like the furnace, you see. There's a pilot light there that fires the thing. And then when the whole thing has become ignited, then the heat flows out. Ha, ha, ha. Can you see what he's saying? Fueled by prayer. Fired by the Spirit, ignited with His glory. Hallelujah, I never thought of that. I mean, it just flowed up out of my spirit. But you see, if there's no fuel there, there's nothing to fire. If there's no fuel, there's nothing to fire. Fueled by prayer, hallelujah, hallelujah. What will the glory covering the earth look like? No more pain, no more sickness, no more child abuse, no more barbed wire fences, no more animal abuse. The financial realm and the beauty will be there. No more prisons, no more children crying in the night, no more walls, no more racial issues when the glory is poured out. Can you see it? God, is, God can bring us to a place to see it in the realms of prayer. When God shows us the beauty of his perfection, it gives us more desire to pray for it. We pray for that right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank what you, he's Lord. saying is heaven on earth. That little sliver of time between now and the millennium realm, some of us are going to experience some heaven on earth. Yes. Bring it into our cities, Lord. Bring it into you, our Lord. towns. Bring it into our families. Bring it into our churches. Bring it into our government. Thank bring you, it Jesus. into the, to, to, to uh, all the governments of the world. We ask. Praise you, Lord. Send rain, latter yes. rain upon us in Jesus' Thank name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. I don't know. I got blessed. I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm blessed. I feel blessed. Amen. I feel like God's going to do something here in a minute. Mm -hmm. So let's take out that other one now. We might not get through this whole one. Tim, you have a pen? You, 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 you might want to keep it because I might say let's stop it there and keep it till next time, right? Mm -hmm. So when, you want to make sure and mark it when I do, if I do that. Because it's long. There's some long stuff, but it's very important. Because you see, now I want you to all listen to this. And people out there that you're listening to me, this prophecy took place in a whole service. Basically, Stella and I were in a small service in the UP of Michigan, Larry Huggins, who is our prophet, the guy that we really, is our church really strongest prophet. He's uh, one of our mentors, was there. Stella and I came waltzing in the back, and there was about 10 or 11 people in the service. wasn't very many people. He was sure glad to see us when we came in. But uh, unknown to us, we just felt pressed to go. The service was basically built around us, but built around a prophecy to us. However, after I received this, and I went through this two hours or whatever it was where he kept prophesying over us, I realized that he was prophesying over me and Stella, but we represented you guys. Listen. Because what happens to us is going to happen to you and the body of Christ and those people that we're hooked up with. And the people that are listening to this and that we're going to pray with, you can claim these promises, prophetic promise, because much of it is to the overall body of Christ. And so we need to claim this and we need to pray it and we need a, war, a good warfare on it. Amen? Mm -hmm. So listen carefully and we'll go down through it until I sit, and the Lord says stop tonight. May 7, 2009. The Lord has brought you here tonight. The steps of good men are ordered by the Lord. You could be a lot of places, but you're here because it's God's will for us to be here. It's God's will that Pastor Tom and Pastor Stella are here with us from Sturgeon Bay. God wants to do something special among us tonight. He wants you to be part of it. To Pastor Stella, for you, my daughter, shine in the heavens for eternity as a star. And from your place in the heavens above, you look down upon the earth with eyes of faith and love. And you see things from heaven's point of view. And that's why I use you, because you take the high road and you look down from above. You understand that God has a plan for man, and that's what you speak of, not of the natural, but of the eternal. For this natural life is but for a moment, and heaven is forever. To Pastor Tom. Hang on a second. 
All right, did you hear that? You're seeing it Stella. Stella is taking her place up in the heavenly realms. You're looking down from God's perspective. Let's mm -hmm. pray that. <coughs> we need to look at things through God's perspective. Yes, thank you, Father. We need to pray things through God's perspective. Mm -hmm. We need to see things through God's perspective. We yes. don't need to be looking uh, like we're just dead old worms out here with nothing. We are raised to sit in heavenly yes. places thank in Christ you, Jesus. We have authority. We've been given this earth. We are inheriting this thing. The meek shall inherit the earth, not the devil worshipers. Yep. It's us who needs to take this. It's us who needs to see it. And Stella has prayed. She's a prayer person who gets up into the heavenly realms and looks down. And, Father, we pray that over all of the prayer people. We pray that over all of us. And we pray that over the, uh, the body of Christ, that we will become like that, heavenly-minded. Yes, thank you, Yes, heavenly-minded. They say, well, you're heavenly-minded and you're no earthly good. That's a lie. Amen. We're going to be heavenly-minded and be earthly good. We're yep. no earthly good if we're not heavenly-minded. Yes. So, Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Thank okay, you, Father. Now, this, this part comes to me then. To Pastor Tom, O oh, they that would win souls as wise and shall shine in the firmament as stars forever. And you, my son, are a soul winner, and you've cried out to me for souls. And I will give you revivals that will cause multitudes. Stop. Oh, that we could all be soul winners. Yes. Oh, that we could all have souls on our heart. Oh, that yes. we could all le learn how to pray in souls. Yes. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that there is an anointing that goes out right now for soul winning on yes. the body of Christ. Not only soul winning that comes through prayer, but soul winning that comes through our actions, soul winning that comes through our churches, for our outreaches. Yes, we thank you that souls, souls, souls is the bottom line. We see them every day. We see them standing on a cliff going into hell, and mm -hmm. we do everything we possibly can to reach out. And, Father, you said revive voles. Plural, not yes. one. Revivals. We pray that everywhere we go, there'll be revivals. Yes, we pray that everywhere these pastors go, there will be revivals. Everywhere the prayer people go, there'll be revivals. Revival will be loose through this place. Revival will be loose through uh, churches like ours around the world. And revivals will yes, break Lord. out all over the place and will affect Lord. literally this earth. And millions of people will be swept into the kingdom of God. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And I will give you revivals that will cause multitudes to be swept out of darkness and into light, swept out of death into life. See them, see the crowds, scattered, confused, abused, forlorn, misused, abused. I've given you a heart for the multitudes. You've cried over them, you've wept. You, my son, are a soul winner. I'm opening doors of utterance. Where you've spoken to ten, you will speak to a thousand. Where you've spoken to a thousand, you will speak to ten thousand. Got there. And you will be among those who speak to millions. On the way. It's true. It's not impossible for me. And I'll make it possible for you. Stop. Everybody say millions. Millions. Next step. That's the next step for us. We're already Thank up to hundreds Lord. of thousands, but we're talking millions, millions. I believe that we will speak to millions, but there's people out there listening to me that will have the same type of thing, the same anointing, reaching out to millions of people, mm -hmm. millions of people, millions of people. Say it, millions of people. Millions of people. Millions of people. <laughs> All right, I want to stop right here for a second. Glory to God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Arthur, come here. Now, one of the things that's going to be read in this thing down the road here, we're not going to get to it tonight, but one of the things that's going to be read is, and Kate can come up here too, is going to be that I will literally go into areas and places and churches and speak businesses into existence, all kind of stuff like that. And it's not just me. We're talking about ministries and people in the body of Christ are going to carry a, uh, an anointing that can literally change whole towns and cities and, and, and an anointing to cause people, an, an impartation will come so that they can develop and be used by God to open businesses, to make inventions, to get into the realms of finances and every other thing. Because for so long we sat around and thought we were the tail and we wanted to work at Burger King the rest of our lives. But God is going to fuel us with such an anointing 
an infusion of wisdom and raise up young people that had literally the ability to become multimillionaires and even billionaires because there has to be a, a influx of finances toward the body of Christ, an economy inside an economy, and it's time now for that to happen. And Arthur has always been one that I know has had that. God gave me Arthur here, but Arthur represents, Arthur and Kate represent lots of people out there. So I want every business person that is listening to me, I want you just to right now stand up where you're at if you can. If you can't, that's fine. But I speak to the business people, and I speak to Arthur and Kate, and I command them everything to be blessed with, with that anointing, to come into that anointing, fully come into it with no hindrances, and, and the enemy, Arthur, is trying to attack and bring confusion, but I break that in Jesus' name. Yes. And not one thing will be stolen from Arthur, not nothing. No stealing anymore. No more stealing, no more stealing, just restoration. We're coming into our promised land in the name of Jesus, in the body of Christ. We are going to have business people. God's going to raise up politicians, spirit-filled, and, 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 it's not gonna, and, and there's going to be times where it looks like there's no way that guy can win, and they'll win because they'll have an anointing on them, and people will believe them that there are actually people out there that actually do what they say. And we're going to have people, praise God, raised up all over. I see them in Europe. I see them in Europe. I see them in, 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 over there in the former Soviet Union, uh, all of those places. I see them in Japan. I see them in, in the Philippines. I see them in Pakistan. I see them in India. I see whole nations, uh, before if Jesus tarries, I see nations <coughs> going from poverty to prosperity because of the Christians. Yes. Thank you, Father. Do you see that? I see that. I see that. I see businesses coming to Sturgeon Bay. I see some fast food restaurants. I see some good restaurants. I see businesses, different kinds of things coming here. I see prosperity coming here. That old thing that has held that back, that demon, that thing that's trying to stop the progression, I got my eyes on you now, and I bind you up, and you cease your maneuvers and move the people out of the politics that are stopping that and bring in ones who will go with what God wants them to do. Hallelujah. I pray that over every single person's uh, town in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet tonight, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. How, many how many believe we got something done for God tonight? Now, that's not always going to be the way God does things, but that's an interesting way, wasn't it? And so God is always interesting. He's always creative. He's always stretching us into new adventures and new things. Amen. So, Father, I want to thank you that the anointing that is on us tonight stays on us. Now, Tim, I want you to pray over any prayer requests that came in, and then we're going to d dismiss. But I want, to, want you to know, I want, I, Lord, I want you to just keep this anointing on our prayer team and the people that are listening to us. Just keep it there all week for the next week. Because we need prayer in the spirit. Go ahead. Uh, this uh, Melanie, is she a born again? Does anyone know? That's a sister from, uh, uh, what's her name? Sister. Sammy's sister. Sammy's sister. Okay. Uh, she's, she's a Christian though, right? I think. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, she Lord, just we, got alcohol as a result problem. Okay. Let me lift up Melanie yeah. to you tonight. We ask that you send laborers into her life in Jesus' name. We break the power that, and the influence of the devil over her mind we take authority over alcoholism in the name of jesus we pray that lord you you would uh just like you did with me with the chewing tobacco lord we just ask that you would just just suck that desire right out of her in jesus name and that she you know if she even tried to it wouldn't even do anything i tried it one more time and it didn't nothing happen so lord we just ask that we intervene and stand in the gap for melody tonight we ask you for a great miracle in her life in jesus name no devil's bothering her any longer. We thank you, Father, regarding that. And we thank you, Lord, for those labors to go into her life and just keep going at it until she gives her heart to Jesus. Mama Zita is going to have her surgery Tuesday. Tuesday. For Mama Zita, Lord, we 
We lift up those doctors to you. And we ask that, Lord, you just do a mighty great work. I, we know that she's a little older. We know that they're going to have to be at their best. So we ask that you help them be at their best and supernatural best in Jesus' name. You help me as an artist to paint pictures that I not, as beyond me. So we ask that you help them to do the job for Mama Sita that's beyond them in Jesus' name. We also pray for a quick uh, repair, quick uh, building up, and that she be made whole. And we also uh, intercede and we take authority over that pain in Jesus' name, and she won't suffer. And we want to thank you for it. We pray, Lord, for a great operation and great aftermath also, that it, she won't, it won't be a struggle. But, Lord, we just want to stand in the gap. We plead the blood of Jesus over her and over her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for a great operation. And we speak victory over her in Jesus' name. And we also lift up uh, Jim Burns. And, uh, Lord, we just ask that you would do a great work, Lord God, in, his, uh, in the stomach and even diabetes. Uh, we take authority over diabetes right now. We, Jim, Jim Burns is, is a happy guy because he's got us. And so, Lord, we want to we, we take authority over all that nasty junk in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you help, brother, or we, we ask that you help Jim, Lord God, just to be able to make whatever adjustments that you need him to make. That's a huge thing, Lord God. Adjustments. I know, Lord, you made me have me have me made a lot of adjustments, but brought healing too. So we ask you for the a great, mighty healing in his life, but also the adjustments to boot in Jesus' name. We also ask, Lord God, that you that you'd keep sending people, whomever that, that can reach him, Lord God, to preach the gospel to him, that, that he would go from the power of Satan to God, and the power of darkness unto light, and uh, not no longer be stubborn with that religion, but turn to Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, even if you got to send a, an angel or a vision or something just to shake them up, like, like Norval Hayes prayed Zona in, we ask, Lord God, that you do an awesome thing. Manifest yourself to him in Jesus' name. We break the power of the devil over his mind. And we ask, Lord God, for Rose. Uh, we, we ask for healing, a mighty healing touch from lupus, fibromyalgia, arthritis. Lord, there's nothing too big for you, nothing too big for the name of Jesus. And greater is he that's in us tonight than he that's in the world. So we take authority over those things in Jesus' name. We command them to stop, be dried up, dissolved, and out of her body in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over Rose. We also ask, Lord God, another uh, uh, smoking issue in, uh, in Pete Burns. Lord God, we, we pray that, Lord, he'd, make, he'd get, on the, get on the ball with you. To start to, to get really serious with you, Lord God. And so, Lord, that doesn't sometimes happen overnight, but we ask the Lord he start seeking. And, and we pray that you, you'd manifest yourself to him in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, for a great deliverance from smoking, that, Lord, next time he shoves that cigarette in his mouth, it doesn't do anything for him. We pray, Lord, he, he, we just say that he'd hunger after you and not after stuff like that, natural things and all kinds of other things that people monkey around with. And, Lord, we just, we just uh, continually intercede for our family members like this, but we ask you for a great deliverance from, from the desire and the, and the desire to smoke. And, Lord, just to tack on what Pastor prayed tonight, I ask you, Lord God, for just to, in more detail, just that people in this area like Sturgeon Bay and Algoma would stop this uh, buffoonery of, I don't want to change, I don't want to change, I want everything the way it is. It's my happy little comfortable place. Well, Lord, that's not, the, that's not revival. And even in the natural realm, that's not revival. We need to change. Lord, if you need to change out the whole politics of the whole area, we ask you to do that in Jesus' name, as we have already prayed. Just, Lord God, that people would, the whole area would change by our prayers, that people wouldn't fight resorts coming in, they wouldn't fight businesses coming in, that they would literally just say, okay, that's, it's time to change. It's time to have a new city, a new town. It's time to grow. It's actually time to grow, praise God. And Lord, we ask you, we could keep the historical district, that's great, but then we could just revamp the place. And maybe it's never going to have a million people in it. We didn't ask for that. But Lord, just a, a, just as, as your revival fires flow, we thank you that the city can be revolutionized in a good way in Jesus' name. And it can be a clean city. It can be full of holiness and a place of revival for people coming up even Aaron Rodgers, when he comes driving up, and all the other Green Bay Packers, they'd come up here and sense the presence of God in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father, for it. This will be a place where people cry out to God and hunger after God in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.